sport's emotional. Not just from the players, but fans get emotional, everyone gets emotional. So if you haven't got an outlet to be able to let those emotions come through, you keep it bottled up until it, it might reach breaking point. To have an environment that encourages that openness, hugely important for, for sporting environments to be able to do that and comfortable to do that. Walk through the Basin Reserve buildings and it's clear that this is a game that deeply values its traditions. They've been playing cricket here for more than 150 years. So the arrival of Cam as CEO was something of an oddball. A professional administrator with a background in football brought him by the board to write a ship that was struggling. It didn't take Cam long to work out that the trouble ran deeper than just a balance sheet. Well, they didn't have a plan. They weren't sure where they were going. Didn't have too much time for the customer. Probably weren't too sure who the customer was. Had very little to do with the players and even less to do with the clubs. Perception from Canterbury was like, why would you ever want to move to Wellington? It doesn't seem like a place you'd go to then go play for New Zealand. The connection between the Blaze and Firebirds when I first started playing was non-existent. Pretty much non-existent. I couldn't name probably half the players, which I feel bad about, but it, it just was the nature of how it was because there wasn't much crossover. You kind of only saw them at the end of season awards and you just knew of the players. I wouldn't have had a clue who worked in the offices back in the day and what they did. No idea at all. There was just no connection at all. We, we were players first and foremost and that was it. They were the staff. It felt like a lot of well-intentioned people working in a frictioned way. The mindset shift is around broadening the mindset and understanding the need to take a whole of cricket approach to developing the wider community of cricket and trying to connect clubs, fans, volunteers, facilities, women's game, umpires, coaches. Cam and the leaders at Cricket Wellington realised the importance of building a more vulnerable, open culture where staff and players could share how they felt, both on an individual level and within the entire Cricket Wellington environment. When I first saw the emotional culture, I went, oh, yeah, here we go. You have those culture sessions, it's like, here's our values, respect, whatever, chuck it up on the wall and you forget about it. There's been cultures that I've been a part of that will search for vulnerability to then pounce on you to make you feel smaller. When you're in a group like that with a bunch of guys, it's sort of just like, is it going to be used against us? You know, there's been environments in the past where you say your feelings and the coach will come up to you and say, well, mate, you know, you said it yourself, you're not feeling that good, so why would I pick you? I guess as time went on, and once it wasn't judged, it was far more successful. The temptation when working through culture change is to start with the cognitive values and behaviours that support the change. But instead, Cricket Wellington focused on building a healthy emotional culture first. I feel like when you lead with the emotion, you get a bit more back. It, it, it changes the conversation, it changes how you understand the person next to you, the team environment. The stories become a lot more emotive, they become a lot richer, a lot deeper. You're not just talking about values on a, on a wall, you feel like you're actually talking about real human emotion. I think the, the personal growth as well that we've had, I think um, certainly when people have been faced with some adversity, coming into say a test match moment and, and sharing those challenges and having the support of your peers has really helped those individuals kind of deal with whatever it was that they were dealing with in their personal life. And so I think that's where it's been really powerful. I made the decision early when I took on this role that I had to show vulnerability so that people understood who I am and, and what I was about and, and what my value sets were so that they could then understand and see a different side of me because we'd just gone through a significant amount of change. I'd come in, new kid on the block, not from the region, not from the sport, and all of a sudden I disestablished seven roles in my first six weeks and so I needed to very quickly get everybody back on board. Vulnerability is important to a sports team because it builds trust. I know being honest and vulnerable brings people closer together. The vulnerabilities and the struggles you share, are, you know, you share them, there's, there's more than one in the room and know that you're not alone in your battle of trying to become the best cricketer you can be or the best father or the best student. For a group of males to sit down and share their vulnerabilities and for it to be okay and I guess for it to be in a safe place. Um, is, that's probably the most powerful, or well, that is the most powerful part that I've experienced. It's important because it almost releases the burden from that player. Embracing the language of cricket culture has proven powerful at Cricket Wellington. Leveraging the beloved traditions of the game and deliberately connecting cricket speak to the culture, 
the team has developed a greater sense of purpose. Using language and cricket speak, it just resonates with the cricket lovers that we have involved in the organisation. It sort of just created this real familiar kind of place to actually have these conversations. So we've got the test match moment, which is your biggest challenge because there's nothing harder than playing a test match. You've got your honours board, which is synonymous with cricket where you celebrate things. And, you know, the fact that we've got that on display in our office that people can see that. You know, our value symbols are things like a baggy hat that represents one of our ex-staff members that is also one of our best ever players and has also been a board member in a, and heavily involved in community cricket and so there's real pride when somebody receives that baggy hat because that's synonymous with cricket. The great thing I think too is that it makes it uniquely ours. You're not just turning up talking about a challenging moment or whatever you might call it. You're coming to the table knowing that you're talking about your test match moment. By personifying their values, Cricket Wellington has connected the legends of Wellington cricket and share our symbols to the values they strive to uphold and so people know exactly what the values mean and what they look like in action. For excellence, Bob Blair. For commitment, we had Ewan Chatfield. For passion, we have Evan Gray. And then with teamwork, we have Grant Elliott. We've made a real conscious effort to include past players with current players just because there's so much history within the Wellington Cricket Association. We really want to give the current players a sense of what has gone on before them and having that emotional connection has a huge impact. It's certainly seen the best out of the players by having that connection with the past. Ewan Chatfield represents commitment um, and he's given one of his old playing boots to the Firebirds and so you know, at the end of the day's play or at the end of a game the, the players sit around and talk about well, who's demonstrated commitment and then Chats's boot gets handed around. It, it's an honour, I think, that they feel that, that they would like a, one of my boots. I mean, there's been plenty of other bowlers play for Wellington over the last 100 years, 125 years, that they uh, picked on me to have one of mine. You see these things done yeah. so many yeah. times where people come in and all of a sudden it's just four new words. When I looked at it, I thought it actually doesn't matter what those words are, it's actually what those words mean to people. And so that's why those value symbols and having a ceremony around those things and where they are connected and handed from one person to the next, yeah. it actually bring those thing, it brings those things to life. And so they're a lot more powerful because they actually mean something and there are behaviours that, that sit behind those things rather than just a new CEO coming in and going, OK, it's now those new four yeah. words and off you go, it sits in a drawer as opposed to bringing those things to life. But it's not all about high performance cricket teams. By including everyone from fast bowlers to ground staff to the front office and past players, Cricket Wellington was able to build a clear understanding of the emotional drivers within all the different parts of the One Cricket Wellington team. You're sitting there with your manager or the CEO of mm. you know, Cricket Wellington and you're listening to them be really vulnerable with their white cards and it's made work feel a lot safer and it really, I think, puts everyone on the same page. It really doesn't feel like it's an us and them situation anymore. We've got the Cricket Wellington staff, we've got the Firebirds and the Blaze and we've really tried to create this one team culture. Definitely feels like one big family here at Cricket Wellington. The Blaze and Firebirds have built a really good culture together and it's nice to see the Firebirds do so well on the field knowing that they're all great guys off it. Four years in, Cricket Wellington has changed so much. The vibe is different, the conversations are different and the results reflect an organisation that is connected to each other and their community, to what they are here to do and what tomorrow needs to look like. I think the best change I've seen in my time at Cricket Wellington has been, I guess, the vulnerability in the group as young men and, and, as, and as men in general. I think mental health and being vulnerable in, a, I guess, in an alpha male environment is pretty daunting and I think we've managed to break that wall down. Nobody's bigger than anyone else on that team and I think that's the biggest difference from when I was there. I've never been part of a culture that's been closer or tighter. It doesn't feel like there's this hierarchy where you're having to tiptoe around people. You really feel like you're coming to work every day with friends. We're not insular anymore, we're not in silos. We really are one team that really buys into everything that we're trying to do for cricket. I think everyone feels like they're part of something. And in my role now, I come into people that do interact with the Firebirds and you, you don't hear bad words said about the individuals or the team, that you know, they're good people first and foremost and that's all you can ask. As a fan, Cricket Wellington is doing well. Well, they listen. 
and that's a rare skill. They've got plans, they are there to serve. They're now saying, well, how can we help? I think the biggest difference with Wellington over the last four years is, is the communication, both with past players, life members, association members, also with clubs now, there's a lot more support for clubs. They only just have to ring Cricket Wellington up if they've got a problem and they sort it out for them. And Cricket Wellington have listened to their customers. They've really backed women's sport in a big way and I think they were probably one of the first off the mark in, in Wellington in doing that. It's nice to be associated with companies that are, are doing a good job. So from a fan's point of view, Cricket Wellington's exciting. We're human, you know, at the end of the day, you know, everything is really simple. It's always about people. And so it's a card game. As I said, it disarms everything because you're essentially playing a game of cards. <laughs>